Hi everyone, Sean Gilliam here. Welcome to another episode of How to Buy a Home. In this episode, I'm gonna be taking a, bro a look at the brokerage disclosure to buyer. This is an important document which was just updated as of August, 2024 to reflect the changes uh, that have been made in the real estate industry uh, based on policies and rules put forward by the local multiple listing service. And so uh, this document basically hasn't changed overall but it has been added to at the end with the compensation agreement. And I'll get to that shortly. Uh, but this is a great document. It's, this is the document that we give out to you as a home buyer at our first meeting. Uh, at times, you know, if I meet somebody at the home for the first time, I'll give them this document and explain that to them and show what roles that I can serve them in, whether it's that of a transaction broker or an agent. Uh, I'll also, uh, email it out to people if I've only had a phone call with you and uh, let you review that and also send you a link to this video so you can uh, be educated on uh, the different roles that I can serve you in. You may have done this before and uh, you've seen these documents before. It's been a while, so this is kind of a refresher for you. Or if you're a first time home buyer, uh, this is all new to you and that's what I, I like to make these videos for so that you can watch and rewatch uh, to make sure you understand uh, what this document is about so you're well informed uh, as you move forward in the home buying process again this has been updated so this has uh, the most recent edition of the compensation agreement so if you are looking for uh, the most recent document for that broker's disclosure to buy disclosure to buyer here in colorado uh, this is it you've come to the right place and i'll give you give you a brief explanation when we get to that section so but let's go ahead and dig in I'll read uh, here at the top. It says a different brokerage relationships are available, which include seller agency, buyer agency, or transaction brokerage. And it has seller's agent on here. If you're a buyer, obviously this doesn't apply to you, uh, but there is a different role, uh, the role of an agent uh, that I would serve with somebody who's trying to sell their home. And that involves a separate listing contract called the exclusive right to sell. Uh, but I'll go ahead and read this paragraph to you for your own edification so you can see uh, specifically how an agent serves uh, as opposed to a transaction broker. It says a seller's agent works solely on behalf of the seller to promote the interests of the seller with the utmost good faith, loyalty, and fidelity. The agent negotiates on behalf of and acts as an advocate for the seller. The seller's agent must disclose to potential buyers all adverse material facts actually known by the seller's agent about the property. A separate written listing agreement is required, which sets forth the duties and obligations of the broker and the seller. Now, for you as a buyer, this is important because any listing agent out there has a responsibility to disclose to you all adverse material facts actually known by the seller's agent. So sometimes you'll have a seller who doesn't want to disclose things. Uh, they should be advised they must disclose things according to the law. Uh, but even if they don't want to, a seller's agent is required by law to disclose to you any uh, adverse material facts about the property. And that could range from a number of things. Maybe it had flood damage years ago. Uh, maybe uh, the roof uh, has some damage that hasn't been repaired. All those kinds of things are things that you need to know as a buyer so that you can uh, negotiate uh, or choose whether or not to buy the home. It just depends on the situation. Um, but this, is, this should be good for you as a buyer to know that uh, a seller or the seller's agent, I should say, and the seller's agent are required by law to disclose to you any adverse uh, material facts about the property. Now let's take a look at the role of a buyer's agent. A buyer's agent works solely on behalf of the buyer to promote the interests of the buyer with the utmost good faith, loyalty, and fidelity. The agent negotiates on behalf of and acts as an advocate for the buyer. The buyer's agent must disclose to potential sellers all adverse material facts actually known by the buyer's agent, including the buyer's financial ability to perform the terms of the transaction, and if a residential property, whether the buyer intends to occupy the property. A separate written buyer agency agreement is required, which sets forth the duties and obligations of the broker and the buyer. And that uh, separate written buyer agency agreement is called the exclusive right to buy contract. That document, when we look at it and review it and agree to the terms of it and everybody signs it, that makes me exclusively your agent. In contrast to that, this form, if you sign it, it's merely a disclosure. It does not obligate you to work with me. It does not make me exclusively your agent. You could uh, meet with me, look at this form and review it and sign it. 
and it uh, does not beholden you to work with me. So you could go out and decide uh, after uh, you go home and sleep on it, maybe you want to work with a different agent, or maybe you're you're talking with other agents at the same time and decide that, hey, I'm going to work with this other person. You are not obligated to me in any way, shape or form. So that's the difference. Um, signing this form, it's just merely an acknowledgement and a disclosure, uh, whereas the exclusive right to buy contract makes me exclusively your agent. I do have a separate video on that that explains uh, the terms and the details of that contract uh, that you can look at. Um, but for now, we're just going to take a look at the brokerage disclosure to buyer. All right. So unless that exclusive right to buy contract is uh, signed by all parties involved, that would be you and myself. Um, until that happens, by default, I serve as a transaction broker. I'll read the paragraph, but basically it just makes me a messenger and a facilitator. Uh, I am unable to give you advice. I'm unable to negotiate on your behalf. I'm unable to serve as a fiduciary, which means I'm trying to get you the best deal possible, save you as much mo money as possible uh, to get to the closing table. Um, by law, I'm, I am forbidden to do that. So it's going to be tempting for you to ask me for advice and those kinds of things that are the typical roles of an agent. But I have to redirect and tell you I can't do any of that until you make me your agent. So uh, that might be a conversation uh, that we have as we go along if it's necessary. Uh, but I'll go ahead and read this paragraph. It says a transaction broker assists the buyer or seller or both throughout a real estate transaction by performing terms of any written or oral agreement, fully informing the parties, presenting all offers and assisting the parties with any contracts, including the closing of the transaction without being an agent or advocate for any of the parties. A transaction broker must use reasonable skill and care in the performance of any oral or written agreement and must make the same disclosures as agents about all adverse material facts actually known by the transaction broker concerning a property or a buyer's financial ability to perform the terms of a transaction. And if it's a residential property, whether the buyer intends to occupy the property, no written agreement is required. That means we don't have to have an exclusive right to buy contract. Now, a couple of things I want to highlight about this definition for a transaction broker. If you look at that first sentence here, it says a transaction broker assists the buyer or seller or both throughout a real estate transaction. There are situations where I might have a listing and in my agreement with the seller, I can serve them as a transaction broker and you as a transaction broker at the same time. So that'd be something you'd have to think about to see if you're comfortable with working with uh, me just as a transaction broker, meaning I won't give you advice, I won't advocate on your behalf. If you're comfortable with that, that works just fine. Uh, and I'll guide you through the process. I have certain uniform duties uh, to provide to you that are stipulated in section five of that exclusive right to buy contract. That's also summarized here in this paragraph. And so I do have some responsibilities as far as how I serve you. I just can't be an, an agent uh, or an advocate uh, for you or even the seller. So that protects both of you. Um, and I'll be very professional about maintaining those boundaries, as I mentioned before. So another thing I want to highlight too, that if I serve you as a transaction broker, while it is a, li a more limited level of service, uh, you are still uh, allowed to be told about any adverse material facts. And this is essential in the home buying process. If there's something with the house uh, that could potentially be expensive, like a broken sewer line or uh, a leaky roof or whatever the case may be, uh, if the seller knows about it and if, if uh, the agent knows about it, they by law have to tell you uh, about these things so that you can make an ed educated decision about whether or not you want to buy the house or if you're willing to buy the house and uh, maybe the seller is going to be willing to make some repairs or give you uh, a credit to make those repairs on your own. Um, or maybe you'll just accept it as is and you can take care of it later. You're not worried about it. So, but all that to say that even though the, the level of uh, service is lower for a transaction broker, you still get essential information that you need uh, so that you can move forward and make the best decision as far as what you want to do in purchasing a home. Now I want to move on to customer. A customer is a party to a real estate transaction with whom the broker has no brokerage relationship because such party has not engaged or employed the broker, either as a party's agent or as a party's transaction broker. 
Now, where this comes up, I've had this happen where I've represented a buyer as their agent and we found a house that was not even on the market. And I contacted that homeowner and said, hey, my client wants to buy your house. Are you interested? And uh, they said yes. And so I explained to them that, OK, I can only serve you. Well, not really serve you. Uh, you're going to be in the role of a customer, meaning I owe you nothing uh, as far as uh, brokerage duties. Uh, the transaction brokerage uh, definition there does not apply to a customer. And certainly the, the role of an agent a level of service does not apply to a customer. Um, so there's no uh, level of service that I provide to a customer, but it works out well because some some people that are selling their home uh, are perfectly confident in, in handling the process and handling the transaction. And uh, you want me to serve you as your agent. And so I can advise you and take you through to closing. Everybody's happy and uh, you got the house you wanted and got the level of service that you wanted. So that would be an example of when the role of a customer comes into play. Let's look at the next section of this disclosure entitled relationship between buyer and broker. I'll read that first sentence to you. It says broker and buyer reference below have not entered into a buyer agency agreement. The working relationship specified below is for a specific property described as. So if you're looking only for a specific property, we just put the address in at this point. For the next blank, it goes on to say or real estate, which substantially meets the following requirements. And you could say a home in Longmont with three beds and two baths. Now, oftentimes I'll have buyers uh, just have me put into this blank here, a home in Northern Colorado that gives us the most flexibility. And if you bought a home before, you, you probably know that when you start looking, you have this ideal of what kind of home you want. Uh, but as you look, as you pay attention to what's on the market, what's affordable, uh, you might find other locations that you like better. Or maybe you do want a home that's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So that initial uh, list of wants and needs uh, might change. And so putting a more broad uh, definition here allows us to kind of roll with those changes. And then going on to that next sentence, buyer understands that buyer is not liable for brokers, acts or omissions that have not been approved, directed or ratified by the buyer. And so you can give me oral or written instructions and my job is to make sure I only do what you tell me to do and not to go beyond that or not to do anything less than that. And where this could come up in a transaction is that if I go up, uh, beyond what you told me to do or to ask about, uh, it could impact negotiations. It could impact your ability to get your offer accepted. So we'll have discussions about what uh, you want to do, and then I'll do exactly what you tell me to do. And uh, that way you're protected and I'm protected as well. And then looking at the next section here, check one box only. It's always going to be multiple person firm uh, because I work in a brokerage that has multiple agents working for them. So uh, by default, that's uh, the box that I would check. Now let's take a look at some of the other situations that might arise when we first meet. So. If I'm working with the seller as their agent or as a transaction broker, by default, you are a customer until we change the nature of that relationship, depending on the circumstances. And we'll define that here in these first two uh, little paragraphs. Um, so for the first one, broker is a seller's agent, seller's transaction broker, and buyer is a customer. Again, by default, you're a customer if you come to me about a specific home that I am listing. So the broker intends to perform the following lists of tasks. So I can show you the property. I can prepare and convey written offers, counter offers and agreements to amend or extend the contract. But again, I am not your agent or a transaction broker for you. And this only applies to when you come to me uh, and I'm representing the seller. By default, you're my customer. The other option would be customer for brokers listings, transaction brokerage or other properties or for other properties. And this would mean uh, so if you come to me with an interest in my seller's home, again, by default, you're the customer. However, if you decide you're not interested in my seller's home anymore and you don't want to buy it, but you want to go look at other properties that are similar or whatever your interest might be, then my role with you changes to that of a transaction broker. So customer for my listings uh, by default. And then if we start looking at other properties, then by default, it becomes that of a transaction broker. 
But I'll go ahead and read uh, the second paragraph to you. It says, customer for brokers listings, transaction brokerage for other properties. When broker is a seller's agent or seller's transaction broker, buyer is a customer. When broker is not the seller's agent or seller's transaction broker, broker is a transaction broker assisting buyer in the transaction. Again, broker is not the agent of the buyer. And then that third little paragraph or sentence is transaction brokerage only. And this is usually the box uh, that I check just because by default, my relationship with you, unless I'm representing a seller and you're interested in their property, uh, is that of a transaction broker. And so we would check this box and say broker is a transaction broker assisting the buyer in the transaction. Broker is not the agent of the buyer. And of course, we would change that by completing an exclusive right to buy contract. Now, looking at this next little section, buyer consents to broker's disclosure of buyer's confidential information to the supervising broker or designee for the purpose of proper supervision, provided such supervising broker or designee does not further disclose such information without consent of buyer or use such information to the detriment of buyer. So this allows me to talk to my supervising broker, my managing broker, uh, to get advice. So if it's a difficult situation or a unique situation, I might bounce things off of them and, and you know just say, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. Is this legitimate? Is this a good idea or not? That kind of thing. So this just allows me uh, from the outset to get that kind of help from a supervising broker. And then we come down to disclosure of settlement service costs. And that states simply, buyer acknowledges that cost, quality, and extent of service vary between different settlement service providers. For example, attorneys, lenders, inspectors, and title companies. So I have a, a list of um, vendors that I've worked with before, or I've, I've known other people that have worked with them and they've been happy with them. And so if there's any services that you need, I can give you their contact information, uh, but just eyes wide open, just realize that sometimes they charge uh, different, they might have a good day or a bad day or whatever the case may be, or they might provide some services, but not all the services you're interested in. Uh, so that's up to you to do that due diligence, uh, make some phone calls, and uh, find the one that's going to be the best fit for you and meet your needs. And then it goes on to say this brokerage disclosure to buyer is not a contract. So signing this does not make you exclusively uh, working with me. You can go as soon as you're done talking to me and signing this, you can go talk to another agent and sign the same form with them. Uh, so you're, you're at your leisure to do so. Uh, but at some point moving forward, uh, I'd want to be exclusively working uh, for you to give you the most benefit in moving forward and purchasing a home. Uh, but for now, this broker's disclosure is not a contract. It is broker's disclosure of broker's working relationships. And then scrolling down here, if this is a residential transaction, the following provision applies. Megan's Law. This is a big one. I think it's important for you as a home buyer to look into this. So if the presence of a registered sex offender is a matter of concern to buyer, buyer understands that buyer must contact local law enforcement officials regarding obtaining such information. So I can't give you that information and I don't even have the most up to date information about these things. So you would go, let's say you're looking in Longmont or another mun municipality, you would look up local law enforcement website and on the front page, all of them will have uh, a link to um, information about sex offenders. And so you can see uh, what they have on their website and decide for yourself if that's a community, a neighborhood uh, that you would want to live in based on that information. But that's up to you. I can't advise you or, or guide you in that process. That's something that you're going to have to do. I can, however, point you in the direction of various uh, websites to help you in that process. And then, of course, uh, the buyer acknowledgement. So after reviewing this, and you know talking with me making sure you understand that you you would sign this document and all the buyers involved uh, that are going to be purchasing uh, a home uh, alleged or prospectively uh, you would sign this document and again it's just a disclosure it's not a contract or an obligation to work with me now let's take a look at this last section of the brokerage disclosure to buyer this is a new addition that came as a result of that National Association of Realtor Settlement. I won't go into what happened with that. Uh, you can uh, look that up on the internet and find all sorts of articles and videos. Uh, take it all with a grain of salt. But basically, 
Uh, commissions are negotiable. Um, I could say that they always have been, but now uh, they really are. And so now it's being memorialized in our documents, whether it's this brokerage disclosure to buyer, you'll also see it in the exclusive right to buy and sell contracts, as well as the contract to buy and sell real estate. Uh, but that's for a different discussion. So uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, this is where the compensation agreement is stated as I serve you by default as a transaction broker. So I'll go ahead and read this to you and give some comment to it and further define things. Uh, but I'll start out by reading this uh, first sentence. It says, compensation, compensation charged by brokerage firms is not set by law and is fully negotiable. In consideration of the services to be performed by buyer's broker as buyer's transaction broker, buyer's broker's brokerage firm will be paid a fee equal to, and we can put in a percentage there of the purchase price of the home or a flat dollar amount, uh, that would be a success fee, with no discount or allowance for any efforts made by buyer or any other person. So this puts in writing that this is how much I'm charging for my services. Now, don't be scared. This is the way it's always been, but now it's being brought more to the surface to make buyers and sellers more aware of the process. Uh, to highlight the difference, when I would talk with buyers uh, previously uh, to all of this in the exclusive right to buy contract, I would point out that uh, I'm going to get paid by the seller if it's a home listed on the MLS because the MLS would list how much the seller uh, intended to pay me for my services in bringing a buyer to the table and getting you to the closing table successfully. Um, and so I would just tell buyers that, hey, this is how much I'm going to get paid. It's all good. I'm not going to charge you anymore or make you pay the difference. It is what it is. Uh, the only time where we might have to talk about how you pay me or how much you're going to pay me is if we find a seller, a for sale by owner, an off market property, and the seller is not willing to pay me anything. That's when we have to talk about how much you're going to pay me for my services. And so that was the discussion I had, uh, whereas now uh, it's a little bit different in that um, sellers on the MLS may not be willing to pay me. And so it uh, just adds an extra element or an extra possibility that sellers on the MLS or that list their homes on the multiple listing services, which is the MLS, uh, might not want to pay me. And I, I think there's going to be more and more sellers uh, that uh, might choose to do this just because it's they're now made more aware that they don't have to. So, um, but reading on, it says that unless approved by buyer in writing, brokerage firm is not entitled to receive additional compensation, bonuses, and incentives paid by listing brokerage firm or seller. So whatever I put here, that's what I'm going to get paid, whether a percentage of the purchase price or a flat dollar amount. It goes on to say that the success fee is earned by brokerage firm upon buyer's broker performing services that result in buyer entering into a contract to purchase property acceptable to buyer and is payable upon closing of the transaction. So I've earned that fee, whatever it is, uh, once we get under contract on a property and I get you to closing. It does go on to say to uh, give further definition, if any transaction fails to close as a result of the seller's default with no fault on the part of buyer, the uh, success fee will be waived. If any transaction fails to close as a result of buyer's default in whole or in part, the success fee will not be waived. Such fee is due and payable upon buyer's default, but not later than the date that the closing of the transaction was to have occurred. And so that is something to pay attention to uh, when we move forward in going under contract on a property, uh, you know, good faith and making sure that we have all our I's dotted and T's crossed and that you're capable of making it to closing. Um, so that's one of those things that we'll talk about and I'll assist you in that process. Um, but just be aware that uh, this this wording is now uh, in this transaction uh or this bro uh, broker's uh, disclosure to buyer uh, compensation agreement. And it's also in the uh, exclusive right to buy contract as well. So um, it's very important for you to pay attention to this. That third paragraph, broker is authorized and instructed to request payment of the success fee from one or both of the following, the seller's brokerage firm or the seller. 
So this means that if you use me as your transaction broker, we go under contract on a property or uh, pursue writing an offer on a property. Uh, this form tells me to uh, find my success fee from the brokerage firm or the seller and uh, see what they're, they're willing to pay me. And if I'm satisfied with that, whatever the case may be, then that is who is going to pay me. Unless, of course, a buyer is obligated to pay, to pay any portion of the success fee, which is not paid by the seller's brokerage firm or seller, but only if broker discloses to buyer the amount buyer must pay in writing and prior to buyer entering into a contract with the seller. That would be this document right here. This is in writing and giving you prior knowledge of what my fees are, my success fee uh, for my services. Now, your initial reaction to this might be, hold on, I've never, uh, I thought buyers didn't have to pay their agents, the sellers did. Well, uh, typically that is the way it did happen. However, uh, things have changed a little bit now based on the settlement and uh, you are, as it states here, are obligated to pay any portion of the success fee, which is not paid by the seller's brokerage firm or seller. Now, I will tell you that everything's negotiable and I'll leave it at that. Uh, when you talk with me and we're getting to know each other and ask, you're asking me questions and I'm explaining things to you um, as far as what it would look like if you worked with me moving forward, Again, this does not obligate you to work with me. Uh, we can talk more about, about those details or talk about it more in depth, but everything's negotiable. Um, I'm here to help you buy a house and we're gonna talk about how uh, to make things work. Uh, that's, uh, that makes it a win-win for everybody, including myself, including you and the seller and their agents. So um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to get in touch. Yeah, feel free to leave comments uh, on my YouTube channel, or you can shoot me an email and uh, I will respond to you uh, quickly and answer your question as soon as possible. So I hope this again, I hope this is helpful and uh, stay tuned for other videos to come out on how to buy a home and some updated videos based on the settlement and how that impacts the different documents uh, that we'll be interacting with uh, as you purchase a home. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care.